Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I want to do is show you how to solve um, our literal equations for y. So um, a lot of times when we're solving literal equations, you know, it depends on what variable you're trying to solve for. Sometimes it's y, x. Sometimes it's formulas where we're solving for different variables. Well, the purpose of this video is to solve literal equations, basically to take an equation in um, standard form or in a similar form and rewrite them in slope-intercept form. So the purpose, again, of these videos is to write all of our equations in slope-intercept form. And the reason for this is for a couple, you know, twofold. One might be to graph it or so forth, things that you're going to get familiar with later on in some other courses. So I kind of chose four examples. And basically, when we're solving literal equations, just like we, um, the main important thing that we want to do is identify the variable solving. Now, for all of these equations, we're going to be solving for y. And really, our end result is, again, to get our variable y all by itself. So you can see in my formula, y equals mx plus b, which is just the general equation of a line in slope-intercept form. But you can see that in this equation, we have our y is solved all by itself, right? Whereas in this case, you can see my y is not all by itself. It's being added by a 3x. So a lot of times, what I like to do is called pinning the variable, where I'm basically just going to circle it, or square it, or whatever that may be, and just keep it right there. I'm not going to move the y at all until it is isolated. So you can see that y, from this y, you can see I actually have a 3x as well on the same side. Now, that's a positive 3x because there's no negative symbol or subtraction sign in front of the 3x. So that's a positive 3x, not because of that plus sign. It's because it's positive in front. So my y is technically being added by 3x. So if I want to isolate my y, I need to undo adding 3x. So to do that, what I'm going to do is subtract by 3x on both sides. Now, I can't subtract a 3x from a y. And one thing we notice is when we're writing it in slope-intercept form, we always want to have our variable x in front of these, where m and b represent real numbers. So we're always going to write our x term in front of our number. So anyways, 3x minus 3x, that's going to go to 0. So I still have my y. I don't need to pin anymore because it's all by itself. Rather than writing this as 26 minus 3x, we prefer to write this as negative 3x plus 26. Please note these are exactly the same equation, just rewritten differently. That's a positive 26, so we write it as a plus 26. Okay? But now you can see that my variable y is all by itself. right? And what you'll learn is later, you know, we're going to identify that's basically my mx plus my b. Okay? But we'll talk about that later. I just want you to see, I don't want you to get confused with that mx plus b. You can see what I am basically doing there, or what I'm trying to at least do. All right. So now in the exact example, I not only have my, not only is my um, x being, uh, not only do I have a y that's being added by a 4x, because remember, it's not the subtraction sign. It's what's in front of your variable, what's in front of that term, which is nothing. So therefore, it's going to be positive. If it was a subtraction symbol or a negative sign, you know, oh, it's, it's negative. So you're actually subtracting. Since there's nothing there, we can assume that it's, it's adding to your y. So again, just like we did over here, we're going to want to undo um, adding our 4x. So you always want to undo addition and subtraction first. Then we undo multiplication and division. So I'm going to undo a 4x first, or undo subtracting by 4x. And again, just like we did before, um, we're going to want to write that negative 4x in front of the 20. Make sure you keep this negative, negative in front of the 5. That doesn't go away. You have positive 4x subtracting 4x. That's just going to go to 0. But that still keeps that negative 5y there. So I have a negative 5y is equal to negative 4x plus 20. Now, to solve for my y, you can see my y is being multiplied by negative 5. I need to undo multiplying by negative 5. So I divide by negative 5. Make sure you divide by negative 5 on both sides. One step that gets students all the time, students are pretty good with distributive property. They say, oh yeah, distributive property, right? a times b times a times c. But distributive property works the same way with division. If I have b plus c divided by a, that's the same thing as b over a plus c over a. It's the same thing as, as multiplication with the distributive property. So when I'm dividing this these two terms by negative 5, this negative 5 divides into both of them. So negative 5 divided by negative 5 is y. So that's y equals. Now, I can't divide a 5 into a negative 4. So therefore, I just leave it as a fraction. So I'm going to leave that as a positive 4 fifths x. But negative 5 does divide into 20, which would be negative 4 times. And now you can see my equation is now written with its y um, or variable solved. In this example here, um, ooh. In this example here, we have our y again. Okay. 
So here you can, add, you can see we have our y in this case. And now again, we have a negative 2x. Um, so therefore, we, only need, we can see that we're subtracting. So therefore, we want to undo subtraction, subtracting, which is going to be to add. So we're going to add a 2x to both sides. Again, I have a negative 3y is equal to a positive 2x, um, positive 2x positive 2x uh, minus 9. Then again, now to solve, undo my y, I'm going to divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. Those go to 1. y equals, um, now, this again turns to a fraction, negative 2 thirds x. Negative 9 divided by negative 3 is a positive 3. Again, make sure you divide that negative 3 into both of those terms. Okay. All right, now on this one, I, kind of, I got a little tricky with you. Uh, I can, you can kind of see I kind of flipped the variables. So I have this negative 8y and this positive 14x. So I swap the, um, the y and the x. But again, it doesn't really matter. We're trying to solve for the y. So that's why I like pinning the variable like I did before. Find the variable you're solving for and circle it. All right, now I'm going to undo everything that's happening to that variable. And you can see in this case, my variable is being multiplied by negative 8 and is being added by 14x. Again, always undo addition and subtraction first. So by undoing adding a 14x, I'm going to subtract a 14x to both sides. Therefore, that's going to leave me with a negative 8y is equal to, that goes to 0, negative 14x minus 22. Now, <clears throat> um, I need to undo multiplying by negative 8. So I'm going to divide by negative 8. Remember, this negative 8 is going to divide into both of those terms, but it doesn't divide into any term evenly. At least in these two examples, it divided into it evenly, right? This doesn't divide into it evenly at all. So that's OK. Uh, but what we're going to do, what we're going to want to do in this case, perfect answer, is leave this as y equals. We want to reduce our fraction. You can see these are all even numbers, so these can all be reduced. Um, so this one can be reduced as, you can divide the top and the bottom by 2. So this would be a positive 7 fourths x. And top and bottom over there would be a minus an 11 fourths. So it is possible to have a fraction for your m and for your, denom or for your b. Um, both of those could be fractions. Either way, that works. Um, but there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's kind of just a nice little crash course into uh, solving literal equations when you have an uh, equation in the standard form. All right, thanks.